A few bold thinkers are now making giant strides towards understanding what goes on inside black holes. And the new laws of physics that emerge have an astonishing implication. You, me, and the world we live in may be nothing more than an illusion. So as you'll recall, a few weeks ago, our book glossed over the concept of Hawking radiation. This would be comparable to a world history book making the years from 1939 to 1945 nothing more than a footnote. To understand why, let's go back to Hawking radiation. Now Hawking radiation, which is named after the famous physicist Stephen Hawking, is the radiation given off by virtual particles right outside the event horizon of a black hole. Virtual particles are particles and antiparticles that pop into and out of existence at near immeasurable speeds. When these virtual particles collide with each other, they annihilate each other, and they do this an instant after they form. Thus, scientists don't actually consider them part of reality, hence their name, virtual particles. When virtual particles form just outside the event horizon, though, one particle falls into the black hole, never to be seen again, while the other escapes its gravitational pull and becomes radiation. If this concept is true, then black holes should glow ever so faintly. To my knowledge, we have yet to prove or disprove this theory, though attempts are currently being made by creating sonic black holes here on Earth. However, Dr. Hawking's proposal of such radiation upset the physics community. His interpretation of Hawking radiation violated one of the most sacred tenets of physics, that information is always conserved, and this marked the beginning of the black hole war. This war was waged mostly between the famous Stephen Hawking and the theoretical physicist Leonard Susskind. What Susskind sought to do was prove that black holes do not destroy information, that the matter and energy that fall into a black hole are somehow conserved. After a decade, he suddenly came to a solution. A simple way of looking at this problem can be found with the cosmic thought experiment, the dead and alive paradox. The dead and alive paradox, not to be confused with Schrodinger's cat, stars the two astronauts, Alice and Bob, and a black hole. From Bob's point of view, as Alice begins to fall towards the event horizon of the black hole, she slows down more and more until eventually she becomes completely motionless, frozen in time, so to speak. From Alice's point of view, however, she falls cleanly through the event horizon of the black hole. As she nears the center of the black hole, gravity begins to have dramatically differing effects on her body, and she undergoes a process known as spaghettification. I don't want to go into in detail what happens to her, it's not pretty. Susskind's approach to solving this paradox was by applying principles of string theory, which he has assisted in formulating. In string theory, elementary particles have vibrations, and those vibrations have vibrations, ad infinitum. By thinking of these elementary particles and their vibrations as the relationship between a prop plane and its propellers, we can see that were you to slow down time around a spinning propeller, its blades would come into view. Not only this, though. More propellers and blades would continue to come into view the more you slowed time down until you slowed it down to zero, and these propellers or vibrations would completely cover the known universe. So with this knowledge, we return to the dead and alive paradox with Bob and Alice. This time, though, Alice has a prop plane. Alice's view is much the same, including the horrible fate that lies at the center of the black hole. Bob's view, however, is much different. The closer Alice gets to the event horizon, the more propellers and blades Bob begins to see. This continues until Alice reaches the event horizon, and she, in effect, becomes completely smeared over the entire thing. So whereas in the former paradox, Alex was both dead and alive depending on the view, in this one, she is dead both ways, but in one, she has actually ceased to be three-dimensional. That idea has now, it's not an idea anymore, it's a really basic principle of physics, that information is stored on a kind of holographic film at the edges of the universe. Indeed, it is now believed by physicists that all of the information contained within our universe is nothing more than a three-dimensional projection of information stored on a two-dimensional membrane at the very edge of the cosmos. Now while this should be the punchline though, in truth, this is only the beginning. There are many theories on what this means for all of existence. Two of the more popular ones are the multiverse theory, which is made popular by media such as Family Guy, and which is championed by theoretical physicists such as Michio Kaku, which, in a phrase, is... Cosmic music resonating throughout 11-dimensional hyperspace. And another as championed by Nick Bostrom, a Swedish philosopher, which is the simulated reality theory. Now this theory in particular resonates with me as a gamer trying desperately to find some justification for wasting away in front of a monitor. Uh, trying without much luck, I might add. 
Now what this theory states is that if our universe is nothing more than information stored two-dimensionally, much like our virtual universes such as the internet, could we exist as a computational simulation on a two-dimensional object in another universe? Could existence as we know it be no fundamentally different than this? The field of physics is growing exponentially, and with its growth comes the growth of technology. We are heading to places that differ so severely from accepted views of reality that what we believe could never be accomplished will most certainly one day be as natural as breathing. To quote Arthur C. Clarke, the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible. This has been Stuart Will. Thanks for listening.